All right, good afternoon, everybody. Our friend Submerse here on the, on the YouTube, on the YouTube comment section. He said something about how Jordan Peterson says that the ethical, ethical uh, atheist is a Christian by his actions. And then he said, on a related note, Sam Harris is not a very ethical person. And uh, he wasn't sure how much he agreed with this idea or not. I, I have not heard Jordan Peterson say that. I, I don't listen to him that much. Although I uh, don't mind saying I like listening to him when I do. But, um, there, you know, what he's saying has very deep roots. Uh... I'm trying to think, you know, I, I don't prepare for these videos. I just base it on whatever things that I've heard in the past, and it could be wrong. But I seem to remember one of the church fathers saying something about Aristotle being one of the greatest Christians who ever lived, even though he was obviously not a Christian. If I'm not mistaken... Was that St. Augustine who said that? I'm not sure. <coughs> or it could have been... Um, oh, I'm trying to think. Uh, the other one was very... That very famous... Uh, anyway... It's fascinating that, that you have that comment because... I, I believe in Mar Nebuchad. By the way... I don't remember having learned the whole part of the book. I've read a little bit the English translations here and there. But I believe the Rambam, Maimonides, says that uh, Aristotle was the closest thing to being a prophet. Um, outside of, of our prophetic tradition. And it's interesting, he didn't say that about other other people claiming to be prophets, which some Jewish people do today. It's, uh, you know, I, I saw both on the extreme left and the extreme right uh, of orthodoxy, rabbis who claim that in this week's Parsha we read about Bilaam, that if Bilaam was a prophet, so then uh, someone else could be a prophet. Muhammad, whatever, Joseph Smith, whatever it is. I think they specifically said this about Billa. I mean, about Muhammad. Um, however, uh, the only answer I have to that that I've always given is the Kedushas Levi, when he's, he brings the Medrash that says, like, come be Israel, come that there did not arise among Israel any prophet like Moses. Lo come nabi be Israel, come And the Medrash says, come. But, but among the nations of the world, they did arise. And the... Um, and Omihu Bilam. And who was it? It was Balaam. So, Ketushas Levi explains, though, that it says that, that what he means there is that the Madrega, the, the spiritual level that Moses was in prophecy and Kedusha and holiness that God made this against this that the um, Balaam Bilam, they call him in English Balaam that he was the opposite uh, that whatever Moses was in holiness that's what Bilam was in Tuma in, in impurity in unholiness Um, and so therefore uh, Billam ran a strictly non-profit organization uh, but with that being said I do still I, I understand what they're saying with that and the same thing could be said it's not only Islam because they happen to share uh, theology with us you know 
there are positive aspects of the other religions. I mean, I would say just like Bishop Fulton Sheen would say about his faith, you know, he believed his faith, the, the Catholic Church, had the whole pie. But the, the, some of the other religions had a big piece of the pie. You know, maybe even had 75% of the pie, you know, maybe 90% of the pie. Um, and then he believed his had the 100%. And I think he's wrong about his, but I think it's mine that has the 100%. But I can also see, <coughs> like he said, that the other religions have pieces of the pie. And like he said that the Church Fathers respected the Greek philosophers and the Roman philosophers, as did the rabbis, not only Maimonides, but the other, even earlier rabbis as well. And the, um, what do you call it, the, I mean, we know that Antoninus, who was generally identified as Marcus Aurelius, um, that he was a friend of Verbeno Akkadish, of Rebbe, of Rabbi Yehuda Anasi, the, the redactor of the Mishnah. So, um, the... You know, that's the message that we have here with that, but... Um, and it's interesting what Bishop Fulton Sheen would always say is that just as the Western philosophers, I think there was a, a rap battles of history, you know, uh, epic rap battles of history of the Eastern philosophers versus the Western philosophers. Um, and Bishop Fulton Sheen said, you know, just as the pagan Western philosophers were recognized as valuable by the church, so too the Eastern philosophers, Confucius and, and and Lao Tzu and so forth. Um, and, and so classically, the Christians, even the Church Fathers, recognized that non-Christians were great Christians. I Meaning there was this ecumenical spirit that goes back to the early days of the Church and throughout the history of the church. It's not just something that popped up recently, you know, in, in liberal circles in the last 100 years or 150 years. The, or 200 years, or even 300 years, whatever it is. The, uh, and, and in Islam, you have the same phenomenon. Uh, you know, a lot of Muslims misinterpret this, but I heard it from an imam, so I can say that, you know, um, you know, when, when the Muslims say that the, the Jewish prophets and the Christian uh, you know, prophets and, and so forth were Muslim. The word Muslim means that submitting to God doesn't mean that they were Mohammedan Muslims, that they followed the Quran, but that they submitted to God. So that's a similar idea. And so too in Judaism we have the idea of Hasid Omus Olam of the, the pious among the nations. But with all this said, the, this, this idea, I think it gets, there's more to it because we do have the idea of the pre-Christian and the Christians and the pre-Islamic Muslims. And some people will say that the idea of a Christian, a Christos means to be anointed with oil, oil rises to the top, meaning to rise above all the water in the world that could flood us, that could, you know, the same idea of the, the ark, the very water that drowned everybody else. If you were inside the ark, it lifted you up. <clears throat> and so this idea of floating to the top. Um, so, the, the, you know, the pre-Christian Christian and the pre-Islamic Muslim the pre-Jewish, you know, Chassid, you know, the, the saints that existed before, before the Torah was given, before Abraham, even, and, and people like Job and so forth. 
but there's also um, the post-Christian influence, like we have discussed before. The uh, the pagan chaplain who I'm friends with, who you know, has spoken about how paganism has brought ethics and morals to people's lives, and and that is only existing in a Christian society, meaning if you go back to ancient Rome and the types of things that our Talmud speaks about pagans is because these, not because of their race and not even because of their religion, but because of their lack of morality, their lack of, you know, value for, you know, human life and so forth. Uh, they didn't, they didn't have any value to, you know, to humanity. The they didn't believe in human rights. And and it's along the lines of what I was speaking about. Um, the story with, with the British general in India who told the Hindu priest, he said, we will respect your tradition of burning widows as long as you respect our tradition of hanging men who burn innocent widows. And so the Hindu culture is different today because of the influence of Christianity through British imperialism that was a positive impact on their lives, did not take away from their essential ideas of their culture. Not saying that they had to all become Christians, but that, you know, within, that within their culture, certain things had to disappear. And these things, I would say, are Judeo-Christian. And even within Judaism, though, we a lot of these things that I would say were problematic were mostly removed by the rabbis. Um, you know, we can claim that it was always like that, and, and I'm a traditionalist, and I'd like to believe that, and I do believe it. Uh, so, um, you know, the... Um, and so the same thing, the, the atheist who is ethical being... Christian in his actions, I think there is, you know, what to, or to be better to say Judeo-Christian in his, in, his, in his actions, there is something positive to, there, there is some truth to that, to, to the, uh, you know, meaning that the ideas of Judaism that were spread by Christianity and Islam have made the whole world a better place. And so the non-Abrahamic Abrahamic or the non-Christian Christian or the non-Judeo-Christian Judeo-Christian and so forth, even if they be atheist, meaning the atheist who, you know, the uh, the communists didn't ha believe in, in human rights and things like that, you know. So, uh, you know, and that's why I I don't have a problem with the libertarian atheist. You know, I'm not, I'm not here to, to push my theology on the whole world right now. When Mashiach comes, it'll be a different thing, and then we won't have to do it. God will do it, and the knowledge that no one will have to teach anybody about God because everyone will know them from the least of them to graze them. If someone is convinced that you know that our apologetics convince them, because into hate, I'm very happy to learn with you and to teach. But even without that, the basic ethics, the basic morals, the whole world that we that we share, it came from God through us. And then, and then from us to the church, to the whole world. It's a, that's a that's a historical truth, and I don't see any problem with saying that. I know some people might find that uncomfortable, or even imperialistic, but personally, I think it's it's true. All right, thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. Comment and let me know what you think. Thank you.